I'm Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. And I recently did one of the first single reviews I've done in a long time. But before that, I went back and looked and I realized I had done another single review on The Strays, which I remembered, but I hadn't remembered I actually did a review on two essay collections. So today I have for you reviews of two memoir collections uh, that came out on February 6th, so fairly recently, and I love them both. So I want to tell you about them because they're so different and yeah, let's just, let's just jump in. So I'm going to start with I Am, I Am, I Am by Maggie O'Farrell in the US is out from Knopf. And I really loved this memoir. I read this during the 24 and 48 hour readathon and it was just absolutely beautiful. What Maggie O'Farrell has done has told her life in these brief like chapters, like essays about her brushes with death times when she almost died for through various reasons and she doesn't do it in a linear way either she kind of shakes it all up and puts them in a more thematic way to tell her the, her life story so maggie o'farrell's writing is beautiful and she doesn't bemoan her life or these brushes with death she had a very serious childhood illness that has uh left her still with some ramifications of that she had a cerebral problem and she went paralyzed for a year, had to go to physical therapy and still struggles with things on her left side and a bunch of different things that she talks about in the book. And she kind of introduces that and eases us into it through her life and it isn't until the very next to last chapter that she talks about her own childhood illness. And in the last chapter, she talks about her daughter's childhood illness. She has a, her daughter has a severe autoimmune disease, a life-threatening one, and she also goes into anaphylactic shock very easily because she's allergic, highly allergic to so many different things. And so Maggie O'Farrell does a great job of showing us what it's like to be a child who is sick, but also what it's like to be a caregiver of a child who is sick. And I absolutely love what she did with that. And she was so insightful and she just said so many things that I have wanted to voice over the years. And I've watched my mom care for my brother and me and uh, you know, on a personal level, I just related this book in those particular sections so much and I just was in awe of what she did and the ability she had to communicate those things. Well, another favorite chapter of mine would be her chapter on uh, when she talks about her miscarriage. She and her husband had a son and then she had secondary infertility and suffered several miscarriages. And so she has a chapter and discusses miscarriage in a way that I have rarely heard before. Uh, in this particular, this particular chapter is written from the perspective of her mis first miscarriage. And she just dumped forward and kind of looked back and say that, you know, she talks about her other miscarriages that she had. Uh, but she has this beautiful section um, in the chapter and she says, if asked, I could reel off exactly, instantly, and without hesitation, what age all my miscarried children would be had they lived. Is this odd? I have no idea. This is information I hold very close. No one has ever asked me these questions and probably never will. Miscarriage is still a taboo subject, one women will rarely broach, share, or discuss. I can count on one hand the conversations I've had with friends about it, which is odd if you consider how prevalent it is. Why don't we talk about it more? Because it's too visceral, too private, too interior. These are people, spirits, rays, we never breathe air, never saw light. So invisible, so evanescent are they that our language doesn't even have a word for them. She also talks about later in the book, or in that section, I should say, uh, about what it's like to grieve for someone who never lived and that, you know, grieving women, women who miscarry, are not given the room to grieve and are not given the respect, honestly, to be allowed to grieve for something some people are just like, oh, it's no big deal. It happens so often. It must not be a big deal. Uh, I was just heartbroken and it was one of the best uh, pieces of writing on miscarriage that I have ever read. So I would absolutely recommend this book and Maggie O'Farrell is just an amazing, amazing writer. And in fact, I just ordered all of her novels. So <laughs> prepared for a lot of Maggie O'Farrell in your future if you watch, if you keep watching these videos because she's just amazing and I could not recommend this book enough. So the next book I want to talk about is Heart Berries by Therese Marie Melio and this is a book out from Counterpoint and I just love this book. Therese is an indigenous uh, Canadian woman from British Columbia, Canada uh, and she talks about her life on the reservation and how she grew up in a very rough family circumstance and her dad was absolutely atrocious and so she really never dealt with that. And so she grows up and gets married and has a baby and then has the baby taken away from her and has another baby and and uh, she eventually does have a breakdown and ends up in the hospital and they diagnose her with PTSD and bipolar disorder. And so she writes and that's how she 
uh, helps herself and that's how that what helps her get through her breakdown and eventually like through her life it's kind of it's her therapy and so they she has this pen and this paper and she writes and it is absolutely beautiful so this book is her account of that and what happened after that and what happened with her uh, husband Casey and just her life uh, post breakdown and some of her backstory and this book is really told in this non-linear fashion but not in the structured way that Maggie O'Farrell's is. It's kind of just how we as people remember things about ourselves and about how things happen about our past and it's all kind of jumbled in together. Obviously she thought out that structure with intention but to us as readers it just comes over us in waves and it is a raw and visceral and just ever-present. One of the things that I found interesting reading this back-to-back -back with Maggie O'Farrell's is that it appears like struct less structured but it's it's not but also that Maggie O'Farrell has an age difference so she looks back on her younger life and she has that distance. It's kind of like the the wound has scarred over and it's not as fresh but Therese has this raw pain on the page. We are almost experiencing these things with her as she moves through her life rather than looking back on them. And I was so amazed with what talent it, it takes to do that. Uh, we talk about, you know, raw writing as if it's just someone pouring out their soul on a page. Well, it is partially that, but it's still very hard to do, to f make the writing feel as if it's uncontrolled when it's actually just totally and completely controlled and structured. It just appears that it's not. And just the way that she did that was absolutely fantastic. This novel has been getting so much praise. It was given a great review in the New York Times and uh, it's been everywhere and on all these different lists and it, it's amazing. It really is amazing and I cannot wait to read more from this author. She did such an amazing job with this story and it really impacted me in just, was it 150 pages or so? It's not very long at all, but it's, it's incredibly beautiful. And this one has a Q&A in the back that I found very helpful, getting to know Therese a little more on a, you know, just a like conversational level. And everything about this book is fantastic, and I would highly recommend it. And I would actually recommend reading these two together, because I found the contrast beautiful, and they are so skilled in what they do and they write so differently and their backgrounds are so different and this, their experiences are different, but I found them stories about two women uh, that, that need stories that need to be heard. And they, they are and they have, they're just beautiful and heartbreaking and you will need lots of chocolate at the end, but it's so worth it. And I learned so much about them and their lives and, and about the lives of women around the world and it's a quick gushing. But before I end this discussion of Teresa's book, I had to give you a taste of her writing. So I, I flipped through it uh, I, when I was getting ready for this video, but honestly, the first page is just perfection. So I'm gonna read you that, and hopefully that will give you enough of a taste that you'll go out and get a copy of your own. My story was not treated. The words were too wrong and ugly to speak. I tried to tell someone my story, but he thought it was a hustle. He marked it as solicitation. The man took me shopping with his pity. I was silenced by charity, like so many Indians. I kept my hand out. My story became the hustle. Women asked me what my endgame was. I hadn't thought about it. I considered marrying one of the men and sitting with my winnings, but I was too smart to sit. I took their money and went to school. I was hungry and took more. When I gained the faculty to speak my story, I realized I had given men too much. The thing about women from the river is that our currents are endless. We sometimes outrun ourselves. I stopped answering men's questions or their calls. Women asked me for my story. And that's Heartberries. So you'll definitely want to check out Am I Am I Am by Maggie O'Farrell and Heartberries by Therese Marie Melio. Both of these are absolutely fantastic and I really love them. So uh, you'll definitely want to check these out in the near future if you haven't already because uh, such great talent. And uh, I cannot wait to read more of books by Therese when they finally come out and I have a huge backlist of Maggie O'Farrell's that I need to get through. So I know what I'm doing in my future. So that's all from me. And if you have read these books or are really excited about them, definitely let me know down in the comments. I can't wait to hear from you. And uh, But until next time, I guess I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. <music>